in terms of creating a board game or, or um, you know, a piece of animation, um, what's the what's the creative process for starting something like that? Well, um, you'll you'll be surprised that the first thing is the same as a movie. You need to come up with a story. Mm -hmm. What's the story of the game? What's the story of the animation? And um, I don't know. Some people just come up with a name and they try to figure out how that's going to develop. I usually think about the ending, and then I go in retrospective. So I go, how do we get to that point? And then start working from there. And it has helped me a lot in having a vision of the end and then how do we get to that point? The, what I noticed when I was doing a, the research for the board games is that uh, for a lot of people, uh, doing a game, it was just to come up with an idea, make the graphics look according to the subject that you were interested in, and make it into a game that is called, it's a, it's a technique of a game that is called Who Gets There First, like Candyland. Mm -hmm. Candyland is a Who Gets There First game, right? So there's really nothing, there's no substance behind the game. It's just, this is your on how fast can you get to that point? Oh, but the subject is, I don't know, um, um, losing weight, mm -hmm. right? And then, but you know how those games are. Everything just relies on luck. You throw a die and see what happens. There's no strategy behind it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to make a game like that, but there's a lot of games like that. So I started studying, um, a wave of games that became popular around the turn of the century that are, they're called uh, Euro games. There's this huge wave from Germany of new designs and new structures. So I started researching those and I came out with the techniques for my games. And I, in the process, I was able to include all the social aspects that I wanted. So again, it's coming up with this story is crucial and then how do you establish the beginning the same as the story the beginning what happens in the middle i mean all the dynamics of the game and then how is it going to conclude um in one of my games we have characters that um they don't have a player they move according to the throw of the die so if you throw a six those independent characters also move, but no one controls those characters. Oh. And one of the games, the, the character that I'm talking about is the uh, uh, immigration officer. Hmm. So let's say that you want one of your opponents to go to jail, and then you throw a six, you start pushing the immigration officers towards that person. Uh, but if they throw a six, they will start pushing it so those those characters are independent, and I like that aspect because it's almost like it's almost like a computer game. It, it works by its, uh, the character works by itself, but no one is the character. It's interesting. I I don't think I've ever played a a board game. I'm trying to think of any that 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 are that unique where you have characters moving independently. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's a really interesting uh, concept. I, I, I'm very proud of that one. That was yeah. that was fun <laughs> because it's it's unexpected. And also, uh, it add, adds a different type of dynamic mm -hmm. to the game. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, video, speaking of video games, because um, I mean, that's, a, that's another one that, that I get questions about all the time is, oh, I, students want to be, they want to design characters for video games or they want to work on video games. Um, that's such a popular thing that wasn't, maybe not so much years ago. So what, 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 um, you know, what, what ideas or thoughts do you have for students that want to get into uh, video game development or creating characters? Yeah, uh, well, and I'm talking by experience because um, I also get parents bring their, their kids and wondering about animation and video games. And what I, I learned talking with the students is that um, they love 
watching animation and they love playing games, but they never made a game or an animation. And there's a huge difference between those things. Consuming the product and enjoying that product is different than learning all the tools to do it. And talking to some colleagues in CalArts, uh, they say that oof, like 60, 70% of the students um, leave the program the first year because it's not what they were expecting. Hmm. I don't know what they were expecting, but doing animation is hard. It takes a lot of patience, concentration, and it's, it's an investment of time. The same thing with doing a board game, uh, sorry, a game, a video game. Mm -hmm. And for video games, I think they need to identify first what's the aspect of the game that they're attracted to. Because there are different divisions. Do they want to be the programmer? Do they want to be the person who does the layouts, uh, the person who creates the story, or like you said, the environment and the characters. So that's more approachable for an artist, right? The, the characters and the backgrounds and special effects. Mm -hmm. um, it's rare that just one person will be able to do everything professionally. Uh, they, they will have experience in some aspect. But there's software out there that would allow you as a person, as an individual to create rudimentary games and get a taste of it. So if, uh, the first thing that I ask the students is, have you ever done this? Uh, do you experiment with that? Do you play with software that lets you build tiny games? And if they haven't done it yet, I say, what are you waiting for? Because from, I don't know, let's say that they come to talk to me when they're um, in high school. By the end, if they haven't done all of that, professionals in the field, sometimes they're, they really spend their whole life playing with tools and doing art and they're just using the, the degree to be specialized in something that they love to do for, they've been doing for many years. The same with animation, there's free software all, all over the internet. It's just a matter of, are you really interested in doing animation? Probably it's not gonna, going to have uh, Pixar's quality, but it's still going to be the same process. It's just one frame at a time, creating characters, creating a story, uh, time consuming and most people have not gone through that process. So they don't know if they enjoy it. They jo enjoy watching the movie, but they don't know if they enjoy doing the project. Uh, for example, when I started, I was interested in both subjects simultaneously with animation and, and games. And strangely enough, back then, Adobe came out with a program that it was, it was called Flash. Now it's called Animate. And Flash was a prog program that allowed you to do both things. You could build games and you could also do animation. And I tried to learn as much as I could uh, on both subjects. And eventually I learned that if you really wanted to make a sophisticated game, you needed to get into programming. And I studied that a little bit, but I couldn't get to the point of making very complex things because that's a whole diff discipline. So that's why video games and animation require collaboration. It's, those are endeavors that not just one person is going to be able to do. Right. But like you said, I mean, it gives you a taste of what it means to be an animator or, or a, yes. a yeah. video game designer when you can. And I remember those flash games, you know, uh, I guess that was early 2000s. That, those were so popular and it made mm -hmm. it accessible to anybody who didn't have, you know, the fancy computer or, or equipment, they could, you know, people more so at their homes could make games and animation, even though they were a little crude compared to big budget yeah. projects. Yeah, but, um, so for example, the game that I built was something closer to um, Asteroids. I don't know if you're familiar with that Atari yeah. game. Yeah. So it was something like that, that simple. And it required action script that 
Uh, it's, it's a variation of JavaScript. And I was able to do that. But if it was something more complex, like different screens, different scenarios, or moving from simple tasks to go to a boss, mm. and then move on to the second level, those things I couldn't do because all of that requires different expertise of programming. Mm. But one thing that I did like and kept working on was the animation aspect. And the simple tools of Flash allow me to learn more complex programs. So for example, one of the programs that I think right now is complex, but has a lot of features is Blender. And that program is free. Okay. And it's one of the most sophisticated programs out there for 3D modeling and also 2D animation right now. And and it has a huge community, so you can download a lot of demos and samples. And so for someone who says that likes that, there's no excuse. There's a tool out there that they can start playing right now. 